learning about art and function, functional art, or ways that artists can make original, aesthetically designed, awesome looking things that also serve a purpose. Historically, in most of parts of the world with most cultures, there wasn't such a thing as high art or fine art. There wasn't really a difference between making an awesome table or making a beautiful painting to go on the wall. Those sort of distinctions came about later. And so for most of human history across most of the world, people have used this art skills and understanding the studio habits of mind in order to make awesome, wonderful objects for their day-to-day -day lives that are usually useful. This is still a huge part of art and of how people make a living using art, and there are tons of different ways that you can do this. We're gonna take a look at a few different paths to abilities today. And really, this is one of the main ways that art is in people's lives, that people really interact with aesthetic or beautifully designed or pleasing to look at and use things in most people's lives. Well, many people have some art, but aesthetically designed everyday objects are much more common. So making practical items that are well designed is a real and viable career path that comes from the arts. So we're going to look at a few options for that that might be fun for you. Option one might be a functional object using clay or cardboard, making something that either actually serves a purpose, like this beautiful and interestingly designed vase, which you could use to hold flowers and water or store any number of other items. These boxes are the same way. Notice how all the things we're looking at have a really clean surface smooth edges with interesting and intentional design. So everything would be easy and pleasant to use to pick up the box and hold the handle and, or look at the lid underneath it. But not only would it be pleasant to use because it's well designed and looks good and is smooth and the surface looks good and feels as though it wouldn't, you know, be rough or pointy and it wouldn't hurt us, but also it's nice to look at. Things like the arc on the lid of the box on the right matching the arc between the feet of the box or the really interesting intricate pattern on the box lid on the left, especially when compared to the really smooth surface on the sides. These are all things that make them appealing to look at and enjoyable to use. You might make a vase of a different sort, and here are a couple of other examples. The one on the left, very functional, but the surface really beautifully designed. The one on the right, more uh, a little less functional, but still could be used for storing some stuff. And the coils, the way of constructing this vase, were also used to make the decorative feature the octopus, which is pretty cool. You might instead want to use cardboard. A lot of people use cardboard to make things like furniture. Here are a couple of interesting chairs. Some students and myself in the years past, uh, I made this boot here. A student made a clay shoe and a cardboard shoe box for it to go in. And on the top right, a student made an opening functioning treasure chest out of cardboard and paper mache. If none of that seems your deal, maybe you'd rather do some fashion design. Fashion design, coming up with a theme f for an either a garment or a set of garments. This can be pretty versatile, but usually you're going to want to focus on the texture of the object, the body proportion of the model, and the drape of the fabric, as well as ideally finding some kind of a theme or topic that relates to that makes several items relate to each other. Here are some really interesting pieces of fashion from a fashion week a couple of years back. And we notice that each of these designs is more aesthetic than functional. They have a lot of really interesting, ex almost excessive detail to the point where at least in the top right and the bottom left, it would probably be difficult to wear these around in your day-to-day -day life. But that's not really the point. The point is to make something that looks really cool while also serving some kind of a purpose. In the past, some students have made either 
a line of garments like the bottom left where the student made a collection of designs for clothes all based on music by their favorite musician or doll clothes as we see on the right hand example and some students have even made their own dresses or skirts or other items of clothing you could instead opt for doing a printmaking project where you might design a logo and print it so logos like the logo from the misfits horror punk band that we see here often combine text and imagery using blocks of value where you don't need a wide range of colors or values and usually trying to use a quality of line in both the text and the object that matches to try and make a sort of theme or feel to help to cultivate and express the identity of the band or the organization. Notice how the line on the edge of the skull design and the words for this band are both rough, ragged, jaggedy, as opposed to these design, designed for uh, Space Force, the newest branch of the armed forces, which really emphasize a smooth, clean line, taking some elements of design interest from NASA and having some a more sleek sort of futuristic look. For each of these different design possibilities, you'll notice a limited range of color, careful use of text, and a way that the image and the text relate to each other or connect in some way, whether that's the shapes, the lines, the colors, or the sorts of angles and arcs that they make. And a final option that I'll present is architecture. You might design using one or two point perspective, a drawing that shows a building that you could imagine. Like this fantastical old castle, architects have to design all kinds of buildings and they have to use intricate, careful, detailed drawing to make an object or a building feel three dimensional. There are a couple of systems that you can use in architecture or in drawing to render architecture that look really good, and we call those perspective. Here, an uh, image showing the Casa Mila in Barcelona, Spain, designed by Antoni Gaudi, an architect who really emphasized using organic, interesting, curving lines, much different than most of the sort of clean, straight, rectilinear lines we see in a lot of architecture. So there are a lot of different paths that you can go down. If you are interested in exploring how art or artists can make functional aesthetic objects, you should follow the web page for this unit through the eight steps involved in exploring the introduction to this, researching which path you're most interested in, sketching your plans, practicing with a new material or technique, sharing your sketches with some partners, creating your masterpiece, and afterward reflecting and assessing your work. Have a great time and happy making. Thanks for watching.